Hi everyone, hope you are having a good day. So if you are into tech Twitter space, you probably have seen people bitching about how every Shatsian website look pretty much the same these days. And Westpos have a tweet addressing this. For anyone whining that Shatsian makes every website look same, it's not Shatsian, it's you. And I totally agree with him. People use Shatsian as something like bootstrap where they install some Shatsian components and call it a day. But that actually is a wrong way of using Shatsian. If you read their introduction, it clearly says, this is not a component library, it is how you build your component library. So you are supposed to follow Shatsian and build your own components uh, on top of it. And as someone who is building a UI library on Shatsian, I can confirm this statement is 100% true. But I can see how this can be confusing for beginners, especially if you come from a traditional uh, UI library. So in this video, I will share how you can customize Shatsian components and make it look unique. So yeah, let's get to it. So I have a new Next.js project here. The goal of this video is to turn this into this Pokemon app where we'll have a search input and a button and a few Pokemon cards. So first, uh, let's get rid of these. We just say hi for now. You can see the text here. So let's go to Shatsian and install our components. We need a card. Let's copy this. Uh, we will also need a button and input. Now it's gonna pull all this code in your code base. So if you go to your project components, you can see all the components are now pulled in your code base. So let's remove this. We will have a container, and inside this we need one row for the input and the button, and another for the cards. So for the first row, let's have a flex. Here we'll use the input and we'll use the button. Okay. After here we'll use the cards. And for the cards data, let's use a static array for now. If you wanna see how we made this dynamic, you can check out my last video. Let's give a name Pokemons. Okay, so now we can just loop through the Pokemons and visualize them in a card. So the Pokemon start map. Get each of the Pokemon. And inside here, print the name first, Pokemon.name. And we'll have to pass the key, Pokemon.id. Okay, so we can see the Pokemon cards and this is our input and we also have the button. Let's bring them in the middle, MX Auto. And we will put this in a grid. Give it a gap. And we'll give this a max width. Alright, so we now have something to work with. Before we try to customize them let's just add one last thing which is an image let's use the next chess image we'll put source we'll give it a height of 100 a width of 100 okay so we have the image but these are public urls right so in order for next image to work we just need to put this in our next config images remote patterns which is an error our protocol is https and the host name will be this save great so now we have something to work with we can start the customization step now so let's start with the button so if you go to your, open your code base and go to the button component and here you will see all the code that Shatsian uses uh, for this to work. 
you can see how Shatsian uses Tailwind CSS uh, for its styling and there is these multiple variants that you can pass through uh, in your component so for example if you just say the variant of destructive then this will trigger this style where you'll have a pg destructive uh, a white text with small shadow and if you see the ui you can see this exactly how it looks so you can change this existing styles or if you want you can add more variants so the first item you see these classes apply to every variance so if you want something to change across all variants then you will do it here uh, so let's remove these and then we want to make it bold instead of medium and everything else looks fine save let's remove the destructive from here now you can see this looks different we can do the same for the input since this is kind of rounded so it must have a border radius so we can just remove that if you search through these classes you should find something called rounded yeah here you see rounded md we will just remove this next for the card we'll do the same remove all the rounded and other stuff is fine great so now it looks like the boxy or retro vibe we have here the next thing we need to do is change our theme so if you check the button code you'll see a bg primary so this primary is a theme file right and you can find them in global.css where all the themes are specified here you have a primary variable with a color so you can just change this from here let's use our yellow color as a primary there's also color themes for background card popovers accent and bunch of other stuff so you can change it and play around and put your own theme in it uh, to match your style uh, but for us uh, i think this is enough for now now if you see the ui you can see the button background is changed but now the white text is not looking good uh, with the yellow background so so let's change the text color the text is coming from the text primary foreground so in the css so we'll change this to black and this should change the color here as well also we will give this a border so give border to save now you can see the button kind of getting similar as this the next part we need is adding these drop shadows just go to global css here we will just make a separate class call it retro shadow horizontal 4 pixels vertical 0 we'll use primary foreground save in the button retro shadow and we will add the same in our input and also in our card Retro shadow. We'll get rid of these shadows. We also need to make the border bigger and the border color. Okay, great. So you can see how we are getting very close to this look. Just need some slight modifications. Like we need to change this font and make this a four column instead of three. So to add fonts. You have to go to your layout and here you can use next.js to import your font and use them uh, by default they are using this font called juist guist uh, hope i'm saying it right for us we'll use a font called share tech and share tech mono we'll replace this we are assigning a variable name to the font right if you search by this font name you can see it's used in our global css uh, for setting the sense fan so when you change the name here make sure to change it here as well let's just change this to share and change here as well
we should change the variable here so now you can use this font uh, font sans in your components uh, to change the fonts but for us let's just use a body to apply the font for the whole page we'll say font family where okay now you can see the font is changed everywhere uh, let's see we can do some more modification uh, before finishing the video to make it look a little better and here we'll text to excel and make this image center we'll make this a little bigger okay looking good let's add this hover effect we see over here if you remember in our global.css we have this retro shadow we can also create smaller shadows right so let's call a retro shadow excess now in our card the default box shadow will be retro shadow excess and then when you hover it will increase the size great so now if you see the ui you can see the box shadow is very less and when you hover it there's a bigger box shadow and yeah that's pretty much it now you can do even more customizations to make it look different like for example adding that badge over here but i think you got the idea i don't need to spend more time going through this so now if you look at this website it's very hard to say if it's from shatsian or not right but we did use shatsian and we customized it to make it uh, look as we want to look and that's pretty much the whole idea and that's what makes shatsian so good let me know if you guys have any other questions and i will see you guys next time Bye-bye.